Hi, my name is Christy Hines. I'm the coordinator of Children and Family Ministries here at Geneva Lutheran Church, and I have for you today um, a little video to watch on Maundy Thursday. So if you are a GLC Sunday School student, you have received one of these Holy Week in a bag bags on your doorstep, and um, if you're following along, today, um, if you look on your instructions, today is Thursday, April 1st, and we are going to be talking about Jesus' Last Supper. That's what Monday Thursday is all about. Um, if you're like me, when I was a kid, I was always like, what, Monday, Thursday? That doesn't make sense. But it's actually not the word Monday. It's the word Maundy. If you look on your sheet, you can see how it's spelled, M-A-U-N-D-Y. Um, so the Bible story um, that we're going to read is about Jesus' Last Supper, and we'll start with that, and then we'll talk a little bit about what that means and then what items you're going to take out of your bag today. Okay, so starting with the Last Supper. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world. He wanted to share his last Passover meal together with his 12 closest friends, the disciples. Jesus loved his friends and wanted to show them his love in a very caring way. As the friends got ready for the meal, Jesus put water in a large bowl and knelt down on the floor. He wanted to wash the feet of each disciple. When it was Peter's turn, Peter said to Jesus, You will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, Peter, you don't understand what I am doing now, but you will later. Peter loved Jesus so much that he said, Then don't just wash my feet, but my head and hands also. Peter wanted to be as close to Jesus as possible. As they were eating, Jesus sadly told his disciples, Soon one of you will betray me. One of you will tell people who don't like me where I am so they can take me away. This upset the disciples, and each one said, It's not me you're talking about, is it? When Judas said this, Jesus gently replied, Yes, Judas, you will betray me. Then Jesus picked up a loaf of bread. He blessed it and gave some to each of his friends, saying, Take this bread and eat it. This is my body. Then Jesus picked up a cup of wine. He gave thanks and said, Drink this. It is my blood, which I must give up so the sins of people may be forgiven. When the meal was over, Jesus and his friends went to a place called the Mount of Olives. Jesus said sadly, soon you will all leave me. Peter felt bad. Even if all the others leave you, I won't, he said. Jesus looked at his dear friend and said quietly, before the sun rises, you will pretend you don't know me three times. Peter said, Jesus, I love you too much to ever do that to you. And all of the other disciples said the same thing. And then it says, what can you do to show people that you love them? So the story um, that I'm going to share a picture book with you, too, to um, highlight parts of the story and make some connections. Um, but I wonder if you heard some familiar words when I was reading that. Did you hear the part where he said um, to take this bread? Oh, let me read the exact words. Hang on. <laughs> where he said, take this bread and eat it. This is my body. And then he took the cup of wine and he said, drink this. It is my blood, which I must give up. So I don't know if you, uh, um, if you watch worship services or if you used to attend worship services live, you may remember Pastor Trudy says those words every single time we have communion. That's what, when we have communion here at church, it's all based on this story from the Bible that we're hearing today, from Jesus' last supper with his disciples. And it might have been a little bit confusing to them at the time. Like, what do you mean this bread is my body? What does that mean? What do you mean this wine is my blood? But um, they would find out soon enough, because the next day was when Jesus would die and then rise again on Easter morning. So... We know that because we know the how the whole story went. But at the time, the disciples were probably very confused by this. Um, so the picture book I'm going to share with you is called Badger's Parting Gifts, and it's written by Susan Varley, 
Susan Varley, and then but it's read by a woman named Ruby D. I'm going to have you just listen to the story today, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. Parting Gifts by Susan Varley, read by Ruby D. Badger was dependable, reliable, and always ready to help when help was needed. He was also very old, and he knew almost everything. Badger was so old that he knew he must soon die. Badger wasn't afraid of death. Dying meant only that he would leave his body behind, and as his body didn't work as well as it had in days gone by, Badger wasn't too concerned about that. His only worry was how his friends would feel when he was gone. Hoping to prepare them, Badger had told them that someday soon he would be going down the long tunnel, and he hoped they wouldn't be too sad when it happened. One day, as Badger was watching Mole and Frog race down the hillside, he felt especially old and tired. He wished more than anything that he could run with them, but he knew his old legs wouldn't let him. He watched Mole and Frog for a long time, enjoying the sight of his friends having a good time. It was late when he arrived home. He wished the moon good night and closed the curtains on the cold world outside. He made his way slowly down to the warm fire that was waiting for him deep underground. He had his supper and then sat down at his desk to write a letter. When he had finished, he gently rocked himself to and fro, and soon was fast asleep, having a strange yet wonderful dream, like none he'd ever had before. Much to Badger's surprise, he was running. Ahead of him was a very long tunnel. His legs felt strong and sure as he ran towards it. He no longer needed his walking stick, so he left it lying on the floor of the tunnel. Badger moved swiftly, running faster and faster through the long passageway until his paws no longer touched the earth. He felt himself turning end over end, tumbling and falling, but nothing hurt. He felt free. It was as if he had fallen out of his body. The following day, Badger's friends gathered anxiously outside Badger's door. They were worried because he hadn't come out to say good morning as he always did. Fox broke the sad news that Badger was dead and read Badger's note to them. It said simply, gone down the long tunnel. Bye-bye, Badger. All the animals had loved Badger and everyone was very sad. The mole especially felt lost, alone, and desperately unhappy. In bed that night, mole could think only of badger. Tears rolled down his velvety nose, soaking the blankets he clung to for comfort. Outside, it began to snow. Winter had begun. The snow covered the countryside but it didn't conceal the sadness that Badger's friends felt. Badger had always been there when anyone needed him. Badger had told them not to be unhappy, but it was hard not to be. As spring drew near, the animals often visited each other and talked about the days when Badger was alive. Mole was good at using scissors, and he told about the time Badger had taught him how to cut out a chain of moles from a piece of folded paper. Paper moles had littered the ground that day. Mole remembered the joy he'd felt when he had finally succeeded in making a complete chain of moles with all the paws joined. Frog was an excellent skater. He recalled how Badger had helped him take his first slippery steps on the ice. Badger had gently guided him across the ice until he had gained enough confidence to glide out on his own. Fox remembered how, when he was a young cub, he could never knot his tie properly until Badger showed him how. 
Fox could now tie every knot ever invented and some he'd made up himself. And of course, his own tie was always perfectly knotted. Each of the animals had a special memory of Badger, something he had taught them that they could now do extremely well. He had given them each something to treasure, a parting gift that would become all the more special each time it was passed on to others. As the last of the snow melted, so did the animals' sadness. Whenever Badger's name was mentioned, someone remembered another story that made them all smile. One warm spring day, as Mole was walking on the hillside where he'd last seen Badger, he wanted to thank his friend for his parting gift. Thank you, Badger, he said softly, believing that Badger would hear him. And somehow, Badger did. sad story, huh? This week is, there's some really sad parts to this week as we learn about Jesus' journey. So this Monday, Thursday is a sad night. It was Jesus' last night um, that he was alive and he was spending it with his disciples. And so um, just like Badger in the story knew he was going to die, Jesus also knew he was going to die. And just like Badger leaving gifts for each of his friends to remember him by, that's what Jesus was doing with this Last Supper. Um, he, the, he was giving his disciples and also us a way to continue to remember him always and to honor him always by, by, telling, the, by telling them and therefore telling us to use bread to remember his body that when he died on the cross and to use wine or grape juice to show the um, to represent the blood that because he was bleeding um, when he died, that is a way for us to. Those were his parting gifts to us, just like Badger left parting gifts to his friends. Those are the parting gifts that Jesus left to his disciples and to us. So, in your Holy Week bag that you received, inside you will find some crackers and some grape juice. Those are the ones you're going to take out today um, to. Uh, commemorate Maundy Thursday and Jesus' Last Supper so you can enjoy your grape juice and crackers. You can eat those today and think about that. Think about, um, imagine what that would have been like to be the disciples, to be there at that Last Supper and to be served by Jesus. Um, so, and if you don't have a Holy Week bag at your house, that's okay. You can find, if you have some crackers, any type of crackers um, and some grape juice, then you can participate as well. Okay, we're going to close with a prayer, so get your hands ready, and give me a big clap and say, let us pray. Dear Jesus, you showed us how much you love us and taught us to love you, ourselves, and one another. Thank you for the parting gifts you gave us. May we always use them to remember you and to honor you. In your holy name we pray, amen. Thank you for tuning in to learn more about Maundy Thursday. I will see you again tomorrow with a little video to explain to you Good Friday.